Well, good morning, church family. Thank you for joining us this morning. Go ahead, have a seat. My name is David. I am one of the music leaders here at Anthem, and I am just so glad that you've decided to join us today. Whether it's your first time or your 100th time, we are hope, hoping that Anthem is a place that you can call your home. In fact, that's uh, what we're all about this year. So if you are looking for a church home, would you consider making Anthem your home? Uh, right now, we want to move into a time of worship through giving. If this is your church home, this is one of the ways that we invite you to give back to your community is by worshiping through giving. A couple of ways you can do that. We're going to have ushers come up and pass the bucket. Uh, you can give the old-fashioned way like that, or you can be new school. You can text in the word anthem to 55498, and then there is an option to give right there. Or you can go to anthemlomalinda.org. And there is a little button that says, go ahead and give right there. Um, if you are a guest, though, there is zero obligation to give. In fact, we don't want to make you give. We actually want to give you something. We have a gift for you. So just text Anthem to 55498. Select the first time guest option and then fill out a little bit of info. Come meet us at the Growing Disciples Center out back after the service. We just want to get to know you. We want to tell you a little bit about what Anthem is all about and why we invite you to make Anthem your home over this next year. Every week, this takes a lot to, to put on. Um, one of the ways that we also encourage you to give back to your community, if you call this your home, is to get involved. We have a whole bunch of things that you can get involved in. Um, like, how many of you got coffee this morning? Amen? Amen? Okay, there, there we go. Uh, we need volunteers for everything, including coffee. We need help there uh, on our production team. If you want to get involved in music, if you want to be one of our greeters on our prayer team, there are many different ways you can get involved and be a part of giving back to your church family. So we would encourage you to do that. Just text Anthem to 55498 or see us at the Growing Disciples Center out back afterward. Next thing I want to tell you about is that we have a fantastic series coming up called Unbelievable and something that we're partnering with the greater campus uh, in addition to just us here at the church. Going to have a whole bunch of great speakers over the week of January 5 to 13. Um, programs in the evening and also some really great speaking on Sabbath as well. So you are not going to want to miss that. We have a little bit more information for you at the Growing Disciples Center as well. But mark your calendars January 5 through 13. Keep your eyes and ears peeled for more information on that coming up. So now we're going to move into our time of worship through receiving the word. We have Pastor Phil here today to give us a, a great message. Uh, so I would invite you to be ready to receive the word now. If you want to take notes, pull out your pencils, your Bibles, your phones, your notes app, and let's get ready to receive the word today. Happy New Year almost. Come on, church. Happy almost New Year. Some of you are like, bro, it's too early still, man. Chill out. Chill out. Hey, listen, I understand. I understand you're in Southern California. You're, you're having kind of a downer December because you didn't have any snow. I get it. I get it. I got to go up to Washington to see all our family up there. It was so beautiful being out in a winter wonderland. It was so great. Our kids made their first ever snowman. It was so cute. Well, there was a lovely family who had been married almost 50 years, and they got that text early December. Mom, Dad, I'm so sorry. We're not going to be able to come home for Christmas. You see, the kids, they want to go do this and that, and, you know, tickets. We can't make it. I'm so sorry. Well, Mom... She knew she had to call her daughter, only had two kids, she had to tell her. She had to tell her. She dials the number. Sweetie, I just need you to know, your dad and I were getting a divorce. <gasps> what? What, mom? No way. You don't do anything. Do not do anything. She hangs up, freaked out, panicked, calls her only brother. 
Did you hear the news? Mom and dad are getting a divorce. What? A div oh, he hands up the phone. He's calling dad. Dad, dad, what are you thinking? A divorce? You guys have been married almost 50 years. Are you crazy? You got grandkids. You got... Do not do anything. We're coming out on the first flight tomorrow. Tomorrow. Don't do anything. And the husband, smiling at his wife. <laughs> okay, son, I understand. <laughs> Looks like the kids are coming home for the holidays. <laughs> and best thing yet, they're paying for the tickets. <laughs> you know, these two were sneaky, man. They had a trick up their sleeves. I love being sneaky and having tricks up my sleeves. My kids, I usually do this. They're getting all rowdy. I kind of get on my knees like this. And I say, I got a secret. I need to tell you. That quiets them up real quick. A secret. And then I look left and right so the, you know, the sneaky secret snatcher doesn't take what I'm going to tell them. And then I say, look, 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 look. I got to tell you. Okay, now I play with them and I do this. I get real close to my ear and then I go, cuckoo. Cool, cool. I got a secret I want to tell you, though, this morning. I want you to get in close. Come on, bro. Just play with me. Joe, come on. Come on. You're getting close. I got a secret I want to tell you. God's got more for you this year. Yeah. Come on. Let's go, church. God has more for you this year. He's got more of his blessings. He's got more of his promises. He's got more that he wants to fulfill in your life than you even want him to. God has more for us, church. The thing is, I want you to recognize the importance and the seriousness of this. God has more for you. And if you want that in your life, I want you to stand up right now. Stand up. I'm talking to you. Come on. Some of you don't want that much. I understand. Go ahead. Stay seated. <laughs> Stay seated because you don't want that much from the Lord this year. I get it. I get it. Some are like, bro, I just need the basics. Just, just, just stay seated. That's all right. That's all right. But if you want more from God, you want more of him in your life, stand up to your feet right now. And I want you to look to the person next to you, put an arm on their shoulder and say, God has more for you. Come on now. Come on now. Look at someone next to you. God has more for you. And now I want you to tell them the real hard line. I want you to tell them the real hard line. Bro, you have to tell everybody. It's just, just, just one. Stay standing, stay standing, stay standing. You got one more thing to tell them. But, but, I know when I'm doing a marriage, you know, wedding, and they got to do the vows, sometimes the couples don't remember everything I tell them. So I'm going to take this really easy and simple. But, you have to get a new mind, a new mentor, and walk in faithfulness. Look to someone next to you and tell them that. You need a new mind, a new mentor, and walk in faithfulness. Pray with me. Come on, church. Pray with me now. Amazing God. We come before you this morning. God, Jesus, Spirit, Holy Trinity yearning that you would do more in our lives. Whether your people are standing here in front of me or watching online right now, God, awaken something in them now. Holy Spirit, help them to discern your word. Jesus, help them to be nourished by your grace. And God, may they align their life with your mind. In Jesus Christ's name, we all pray and we say, Amen. Amen. All right, everybody be seated. Be seated. We're going to jump right into our text this morning. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Bust out your Bible. Some of you are still on Instagram. Bust out your Bible. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And if you've got a real Bible, you're a real believer. That's the one I'm talking to. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Paul is talking to the Corinthian community. This is a community he had been to before. He nurtured them. He discipled them. He taught them of the ways of Jesus. He helped them understand what Christ taught. He fulfilled Matthew 28. 
Go therefore, Jesus said, to all the world, teach them, disciple them, and baptize them. And that's what he did. He went out into all the world and did that very thing. And he's speaking to a place he was already. And he looks at them, verse 6, chapter 2, 1 Corinthians, and he says, We do, however, speak a message of wisdom among the mature, but not wisdom of this age or the things of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. No, we declare God's wisdom as a mystery that has been hidden and that God destined for our glory before time began. None of the rulers of the age understood it, for if they would have, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. However, as it is written, what no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no human mind conceived of the great things God has prepared for those who love him. Those are the things God has revealed to us by his spirit. The spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except their own spirit within them? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. Verse 14, the person without the spirit does not accept the things that come from the spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the spirit. The person with the Spirit makes judgments about all things, but such a person is not subject to merely human judgments. For who has known the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Wow, that's a beautiful passage. Paul immediately tells us right here from the outset that he is speaking to the mature believer. And then he ends by saying that the mature believer has something. They have the mind of Christ. The text tells us that the mature have the mind of Christ. Jesus helps us understand a little bit more what this mind of Christ is. In John 16, he tells us that the mind of Christ is discerned by the Spirit. The one who abides with him gets the Spirit. Galatians chapter 5 tells us a little bit more, Paul explaining what the Spirit is. The Spirit of God, the one who abides with him, will receive the fruit of that Spirit, which is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. If you want to know if someone has the Spirit of God as a mature believer, they will live in such a way that they actually look different. Now, some of you are like, ooh, pastor, are you saying there's this works thing? Come on now. I know what the Bible says. Paul's super clear. He says, by faith we are saved and not by our works. Come on now. That's the gospel. Jesus Christ died for us. Bro, are you trying to teach something that isn't even Protestant? Come on now. I know the Bible. Listen, I'm not talking about salvation. But what I am talking about is your impact, mm -hmm. your influence, mm -hmm. and your blessings. Come on now. You see, some of us are still walking in the spirit of this age, the foolishness of this time, and we are missing God's blessings. You're leaving stuff on the table. No, your dad in heaven had a lot of Christmas presents for you, and you're like, oh, I'm, I'm good with this one. Bro, I had a whole tree decked out just for you. I had all this stuff for you. But there you were, open that one box, and then you got preoccupied with the TV and Netflix and everything else going around. No, I had stuff for you. I had impact I want for you. I had influence. I had Blessings for you, your family, your friends, your community, everybody. Ellen White, in this little tiny little booklet, Help in Daily Living, she writes this powerful quote. Listen to this. The badge of Christianity is not an outward sign, not the wearing of a cross or a crown. It is that which reveals the union of man and woman with God. 
by the power of His grace manifested in the transformation of character, the world is convinced that God has sent His Son as a Redeemer. No other influence that can surround the human soul has such power as the influence of an unselfish life. The strongest argument in favor for the gospel is a loving and lovable Christian. Wow. Some people, listen, are in flat out rebellion against the mind of Christ. They have the mark of this world all over them. They are pushing, pushing, and pushing. Verse 15 and 14. Listen, people do not understand the wisdom of God, for they consider it foolishness, for their mind has not discerned through the Spirit. Some of you maybe are not in full rebellion against God. But I'll tell you, others of you and most of us as believers are distracted by the wisdom of this age we are distracted from what god has for us and our focus is everywhere hey did you hear this and you know what the sad thing is that distraction for the believer is a dream killer distractions kill god's greatest dreams and promises in your life I've been wanting to write a book for years, but I am so distracted. I don't know what your distractions are. You know what they are for you. But in my life, that's what's going on. I've got things that I'm messing around with, and it's like, oh, why? You wanted to start that new business? You wanted to get that new thing going on in your career? You wanted to help your kids learn this new hobby? You wanted to do this? All these great things, but you are still distracted. You are drinking from the wrong sources. You see, there's only two mindsets in this world. There are only two. There's no more. There are two. Paul's super clear here. There's just two. The mind of Christ and the mind of the world. You're either in the mind of Jesus and the kingdom to come or you are part of the mind of the demonic and the kingdom of this age. Ooh, pastor. Whoa, pff, damn. Pulling out the demonic. Listen, dude. Jesus says, you're either going to be for me or you're against me. There's no playing around. You see, the, the luxury of this life in this world teaches us about the unfaithful, the lazy, the devious, the untruthful, the corrupted. And it tells us that source is good for you. That source is going to get you somewhere. That source will help you elevate to who you need to be. Mm, my friend, you'll know if something is from the Lord if you find yourself in greater anxiety, uncontrolled fear, and a greater sense of despair in your life, that ain't of Jesus. It's like this. Let me give you a little illustration here for a moment. You see, Paul was talking to the mature believer, and there is an unassumed reality. When someone is mature, they are nourishing themselves well. Here, my buddy, Aaron, Joe, train with these guys in the gym. Aaron's always trying to tell him, Prince, his son there, his wife, Jim, always trying to tell him, listen, if you want to see results, you've got to elevate your eating habits. I'm like, bro, but I like that Ferrero Rochar, man. I like that ice cream, that macaroni, bro. He's like, and you're going to see no results then. You see, that's like when someone says, I'm about to pop open this nice, clean water, and you're about to drink it. They're like, whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, I got something else for you. I got the new water. It's new and improved. It's imported. It's organic. <laughs> yeah, it looks organic, bro. There's grass in this, rocks. This looks like my like kids' puddle pool, the soup they want me to drink. No, thank you. No, bro, no, but you don't understand. This is going to help you get to where you need to be. This stuff, come on, man, that's outdated, that's cliche, that, that pastor, he doesn't know what he's talking about. This is when we start relying on our own wisdom, when the Proverbs, the man of Solomon, the man who made foolish mistake after foolish mistake and recounted back in his life, and he said, Lord, lean not on your own understanding, people. Lean not on 
on your own understanding. It's like he's saying, listen, lean not on the wisdom of this age, but trust in the Lord with all your heart. I love that our church community makes a commitment to drink, to nourish itself with good things. At the beginning of every year, we make this charge. Brothers and sisters, if you want to drink something beautiful, something incredible, then you've got to drink from pure sources. His word is a pure source. Come on now. Jesus is told that he will come and he will baptize us with water and the spirit, which is fire. If you want to drink from a pure source to elevate your life, you need his word. Go to our church website, lluc.org. Click on the Bible reading plan. We're doing the chronological reading in the New Living Translation. Get the word, a pure source in your life. Stop having the input of everything of Satan coming in. It impacts you. You think that focusing on the wrong thing won't divert your path? Have you ever driven a car? You start looking at the car crash over there and find yourself almost in one? When you are diverted by everyone's mess... Focusing on them, you will have your own mess. Listen, it's very clear. If you're going to do that, you will find yourself with more anxiety within and hatred for others instead of peace, joy, and love. The rush and usury of others instead of cherishing and being kind. The quickness to anger and fear instead of goodness and gentleness. The unethical, the unfaithful, the careless actions of your life instead of the consistent faithfulness and self-controlled movements of your life. Now to reach this, it takes something powerful and it takes the pure word of God's word. But you and I know, listen, Jesus looked at his disciples who were trying to flex when he needed them. Hey, Jesus, we had to sleep because we had a lot going on, man. We had a lot going on this week. Do you not understand? Jesus just shakes his head. Listen, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. You cannot do what you need to do for Christ to achieve your more in your strength. Your wisdom will get you only so far. David Brooks, in his book, The Good Life and Character, writes about how many of us are always polishing the outer accolades of our life that he calls the resume virtues. Hey, I need to write this down on my resume. I did this big thing. I was here. I did that. I sang there. I wrote this. I did that. The problem is that kind of a mindset gets you nowhere. And so right now, we need to move in powerful ways with what he calls the eulogy virtues, the things that will build you up in Christ so that when your funeral comes around, people are saying good things about you. They're not trying to make a stretch and make up stuff. Yeah, he was real good. She was, yeah, oh man. Mm, I better just go sit down. You need to build your life in Christ with the mind of Christ. That is the most powerful thing for you and I as believers. And so I want you to write this down. The mature believer, for the mature believer, the mind of Christ requires clean water. Now for most of us, Romans 12, 1 through 2 is a hard thing. Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. For many of us, it's hard to not be shaped by this world, and it's really hard to be renewed by meditating upon God's word. But this is the thing. You can reject God's word. You can refuse the counsel of his word. But when you align your life according to his word, that's when you get unlocked the more. But in order to achieve that more in your life, you're going to need more than what you can give. And that fire that Paul talks about here in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, he says the fire that you and I need is the Spirit of God. We need the Holy Spirit in our life. We need what only Jesus can provide. You can't do all that you need to do alone. There I am in the gym trying to lift more weight than I should, Aaron. And he comes over like, bro, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Man, dude, if I wasn't here, you would have been choked out. That's the thing. You and I are trying to do more than we should in this life without the power of God, without a holy lift. 
This is your season and your moment, friends. I'm praying that God would bless you, encourage you, lift you by walking in the Spirit of God. But secondly, you've got to realize this. I want you to write this down. Only the Spirit of God can sustain and empower you for more. So get to know Him. But lastly, this is the thing. It's unfortunate when we remain in a state of foolishness. Paul tells us that those who are rebelling against God, which sometimes is us, choose to remain in a state of foolishness. God, I know your word says to align my romantic relationships with those who are equally yoked to me, but you know, people say you just need to seek happiness. God, I know you're calling me to be faithful to my spouse. Your word says that, but you know, my coworkers say that she's just plain. She doesn't have a lot going on. I need to choose better. God, I know your word tells me to honor you with my tithes and offerings, but Jesus, you know, I got a lot of bills. I got stuff I got to pay, X, Y, and Z. God, I know, God, I know, God, I know. This is your moment now. When the Spirit of God is living in you, when you're drinking from the right source, that you need to take the faithful action forward. You know what's right, then do it. You know what's right, then move forward. Faithfulness is your covering. This morning, this was my covering. It was raining. I didn't want to get wet. And some of us forget that our faithfulness causes us to not see clearly. And we start picking up the wisdom of this age. Hey, man, I can't. Wait, why am I not seeing a good result? Bro, you need to walk in faithfulness. That your eyes would see the living water of Christ. That you can take a drink. That your impact for the kingdom would bless and move you forward. Now is your time to have the covering faithfulness in your life friends this new year god wants more for you but it's going to require you now to walk with faithfulness as i close here i have a few appeals for you to remember drink the source of living water ask for the receiving of the holy spirit and brothers and sisters walk in faithfulness which is your covering in christ and if you know that good news then share it We got an incredible revival happening in a week, January 5 to 13. Grab a card and share that with someone. Share the love of Christ with others and move in God's faithful next.